Hey everybody, how's it going? It is super cold this morning here in southern Wisconsin, across the whole Midwest, really. Uh, temperature last night got down to about 14 below. Coldest day of the year so far. Last I checked, it was about 10 below here. Sun's come out, so it's maybe warming up just a little bit, but we're definitely still below zero. So it's a perfect opportunity to do some shooting outside, and we're going to just do a little comparison this morning. We're going to see how our ammunition that we shoot performs when it's stored cold in the current temperature versus when it's stored warm. Why would it be good to know this? Because that can affect your velocities, your point of impacts, things like that, especially as you start pushing the range. But basically right now what we've set up is our ammunition stored at different temperatures. I've had magazines out here for a couple hours now in this minus 10 or so degree temperatures. And I've had some other ones that are about 70 degrees. They're inside by my nice warm fireplace. So we're gonna load them up here. We've got the Garmin Zero. We're gonna check the, uh, pardon, there's a helicopter flying overhead. We're gonna check the uh, velocities and we're just gonna compare how they uh, wind up on the targets downrange. First, we're gonna be shooting the 168 grain Federal tactical tip. It's a 308 round. Very popular with law enforcement snipers. Uh, the gun is for the most part warm. It's out of my uh, 16 inch barreled 308 here, Remington 700 action. Trying to breathe in my scope here. Oh, that ring's a little stiff. So as I was shooting that, my phone stopped recording and completely shut off. I had 60% battery and it went down to about 10% and shut off. I don't know if it was from the cold or battery or what. But we've got it plugged in now. I've got a hand warmer next to it, so hopefully that'll keep it going as long as we need. Five shots from the 10 below temperature. Our average speed, 25.77. So now we're gonna go grab the warm ammo from inside and we're going to see if we see any difference. Our fire has died but that's all right you can see oh temperature 80 degrees nice and warm here so we're going to grab this ammo go shoot it. Hey, we're still recording this time. All right, average there, 2536. All right, so we'll go back in. We'll compare those in a minute. Let's go look at our targets first. So let's take a look. Pretty similar. Interesting. I don't know much you want to read into it. This is the first group I shot, the cold stuff. So we've got five, looks like three there, two there. Uh, this is a two inch square to give you an idea of the size. Obviously five rounds in one hole for the warm stuff. I don't know if I'd read too much into that. These were my first five shots I've shot in a while. That could be me, but it is kind of interesting. None the least. That's a nice group there. I'm happy with that. So I didn't expect a ton of difference there. That's good, high quality ammo. I'm sure Federal uses what we call a temperature stable powder that's designed to perform about the same in, you know, a wide range of temperatures for this very reason, because we need to be consistent. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with some 223 ammo. This is AAC 77 grain open tip match. Shooting it out of a 16 inch American Defense manufacturing rifle, nice accurate. This is a MOA rifle. Surefire can on it, Vortex Razor, one to 10. I'm told, I've heard, this does not have temperature stable powder. 
we'll see. Again, this is the cold stuff first. It's been outside for a couple hours, probably about 10 below zero. I forgot which one I'm shooting at. All right, five rounds, average velocity, 2659. 2659 with cold ammo. I'm gonna run, grab the warm magazine real quick. Warm ammo here, again, 80 degrees. Obviously the gun's warmed up a little bit now that we've shot it too. Oh, excuse me, the gun was warm. Getting a little mirage from the suppressor there. Average, 2702. 2702. Go look at the target again. Interesting. Interesting. So we did see a point of impact shift here. A little bit little bit now again is it huge no how much do we want to read into that i'm not sure we'll compare it when we go look at the numbers but so this was the cold group's a little bit larger i felt i shot them all good gun of course i mean it was warm to start so we shot this group first the cold ammo first and then we shot this the warm ammo, obviously the gun's warming up a little bit here too. I did have some mirage on my suppressor the last few rounds after the first two rounds here. Interesting. Now if we take, you know, if we kind of take that one out, the group sizes are pretty similar. You know, so maybe that was me a little bit. But maybe it's just a little vertical displacement. Again, a little higher with the cold ammo. So first, Federal Tactical Tip 168, this is the 308. Again, popular law enforcement sniper round. Really consistent here. We're seeing average velocity actually drop just a little bit with the warmer ammo. I've only shot five rounds of each, so five data points. I wouldn't be surprised by anything here, I guess, is what I'm saying. I wouldn't be surprised that this shot a little bit slower than this. I mean, I guess I am a little bit, but we probably need to shoot a little bit more. There could be some other stuff going on there, or it could be absolutely nothing. SDs stayed almost the same. They're both really good for factory ammo. Groups, I would call these groups basically the same. Same thing, I wouldn't read into this. For one, this is the first group I shot. Yes, this is a one hole, five shot, you know, quarter MOA group. And this is a, you know, three quarter MOA group. That said, people who say, oh, my rifle shoots quarter MOA. Yeah, one out of 10 groups. And that might've just happened to be the one. I wouldn't assign that with a temperature difference. The other thing, look at this. You know, if I maybe pulled that one just a little bit, or that was my cold bore shot. You know, these four rounds are almost the same as those five rounds. And so... Anyways, federal tactical tip, there's that. The AAC is what is worth looking at here. Now, I want to make it clear, I love this ammo. This is great stuff. 
I shoot in the summertime. It's 60 cents a round versus a buck, a buck 20 a round for, say, a federal gold medal match. But I've been told that it has uh, powder that is not temperature stable. And what we're seeing here, again, only five shots each, so barely scientific. Much higher SD with the minus 10 degree ammo, very cold ammo. So 19.9, average velocity 26.59. It's quite a bit slower, eh, 40 feet per second slower than 2702, which we have over here with the 70 degree ammo. Smaller SD, so more inconsistency here in these at least five shots. Groups, eh, you know, that's a big enough shift for me to take note. Shift a little right and a little high. You know, if we look over here, I've got several rounds that are right on the right edge of this square. You know, look how much more lateral dispersion I have here. And again, you know, I felt confident shooting all five of those shots, all five of these shots, all 10. Definitely a vertical displacement. Why did the cold ammo shoot higher than the warm ammo? I'm not sure, I'm not sure. What's interesting here is the high, highest velocity with the cold ammo, 2691. That was the lowest velocity with the warm ammo, 2691. So there you have it. That's a little unscientific ammunition testing in the backyard on a very, very cold day. You know, wrapping up the big takeaways, go test your stuff and test it yourself. You know, if you're a police sniper out there, don't rely on my stuff. This is shooting out of my gun, my ammo. All of that stuff. I feel pretty confident this federal tactical tips, good stuff, and it's probably going to work out for you, but don't rely on me, okay? You want the confidence to know that that's going to work for you. Now, if we see a little difference in velocity here, or down here with the AAC, it doesn't matter. How much does that matter? When does it start becoming a problem? Well, it depends what you're shooting. For law enforcement snipers there, even though the price of failure is frankly, higher than in a match, th that's all plenty good for what we shoot, right? We're not going to shoot an MOA target at 500 yards, probably not. So that's pretty good for our mission. Obviously, we want to be as best as we can, but it's good stuff. It's acceptable. AAC here, right? Depends. Again, depends what I'm doing. I would, you know, be careful if I was going to go shoot a gas gun match in the middle of winter in a really cold day is what this kind of initial information is telling me. That's enough of a shift, I feel, that at a few hundred yards, you know, three, 400 yards, even on a BC uh, steel or two-third Ipsic or something like that, eh, I'm starting to get to the point where I bit, might be a little concerned about missing. I might have a few rounds that sneak off the edge. If I'm just shooting cardboard at 100 yards, is that going to matter? Probably not. So it all depends what you're going to do with it. Keep that in mind. Consider what you're trying to achieve, your objective. The big thing that I would really be looking for in this is any irregularities that I see at extreme cold temperatures or extreme hot temperatures, right? Should probably test this at in uh, warmer conditions as well. So like I said, love this AAC ammo. It's 60 cents around versus a buck 20 around for some other mass grade ammos, but that might be you know one of the ways that they save a little bit of money on it, the powder they use, and I can understand that. All right, if you've got any questions, uh, shoot them to me in the uh, comments below. And give it a thumbs up, all that stuff. All right, catch you later.